Okay, here's a Green's theorem problem uh, that we didn't have time to get to in class. And it's use Green's theorem to find the work done by the force. Here's a vector field. f of x, y equals x times x plus y, i plus x, y squared, j. And it's along a closed curve moving from the origin along the x-axis to 1, 0, and then along line segment to 0, 1. Mm, nice. And then back to the origin. Nice little triangle. Okay. So, the work, of course, is a line integral along this curve of f dot dr. And that's a closed curve. And so, I'm going to put the little closed curve symbol there. And it's a closed curve that's the boundary of a region. And what's really important is it's a region on which the vector field is very nice. Now, this vector field is never bad, and so that's not a problem, but that is something you always have to check. And We've talked a little bit, and we'll talk more about how that can be really subtle. So Green's theorem applies. And so it's the integral over the interior of the scalar curl of f. And that has some advantages. This uh, boundary has three pieces. We'd have to parametrize them separately. That'd be a pain. They're not hard to parametrize. You could definitely do it directly. But now the interior is just one piece. And we've gone from a vector field to a scalar, as long as we can calculate that scalar curl, which we will. OK, I'll leave some space for the limits there. Scalar curl of f, of course, is dq dx minus dp dy. Got to get the sign right if you want to get the right answer. So dq dx is y squared. And dp dy, well, the x squared doesn't contribute anything. And so xy is just x. And now I want to set it up as a dy dx or dx dy. Let's just set up dy dx. It shouldn't matter. x is going from 0 to 1. And y is going from, hmm, let's see, what is this curve? It's where x plus y equals 1, or y is 1 minus x. So 0 to 1 minus x. OK, not too hard. Integrate in y, we get 1 third y cubed plus xy from 0 to 1 minus x dx equals integral from 0 to 1, 1 third of 1 minus x cubed plus x times 1 minus x. And 0 doesn't contribute anything, as it happens. dx. And that's not too hard to finish off. Equals, um, I'm lazy. I'm, I don't want to cube out 1 minus x cubed, although we could. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little u sub. u equals 1 minus x. du is minus dx u is then going from 1 to 0, and then the minus sign gets exported out, and I'm going to use that to flip in a second. This is not an essential trick here. Now, x is 1 minus u. Just want to do it in the most efficient way possible. Now, I just use the minus sign to flip it back. Okay, now that's not bad. And so that's going to be 1 twelfth u to the fourth plus 1 half u squared minus 1 third u cubed, all from 0 to 1. The 0 doesn't contribute, once again. And I just get a twelfth plus a half minus a third is 1 twelfth. Whoops, that's a half, sorry. 1 twelfth plus 6 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. 3 twelfths, which is 1 quarter. Okay. So the, me the details of the answer are not the really important thing. The important thing is taking this line integral and turning it into an area integral using Green's theorem. Now, the next example is exactly backwards, where we have the cycloid. Every math teacher's, well, not just math teachers, but every math aficionado's favorite example of a parametrized curve that really isn't real fun to deal with in a non-parametrized way. 
what does this look like? I'll, uh, I won't do the whole lecture about the cycloid, but it, what's, it's what it looks like if you have like a, a thorn on a tire and you just track the progress of the, torrent, of the thorn as the tire rotates around. This goes like this, it keeps going. And as t goes from 0, that's 0, comma, 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, to 2 pi, then x goes from 0 to 2 pi, because again, sine of 2 pi is 0, so x is now 2 pi, and y is back to 0. When t is pi, then x is pi, minus 0, so that's pi, and this is 1 minus minus 1 is 2. And we want to know how big this area is. Now, you might think it's a rather complicated thing, because as soon as you try to do this in any standard way, you need y as a function of x, and then you would integrate. It's like, okay, as long as I can get y as a function of x, I'm just going to integrate y of x dx from 0 to 2 pi. But look at what happens. If you try to solve for t in terms of x, it's impossible. You can't solve this kind of equation for t in terms of x. And then you'd have to plug it into here. Even if you could get it, it'd be this nasty thing you'd put inside the cosine. Um, there's just actually no way to write down an algebraic solution for this with y as, as a function of x. It, that's why it's such a good example of something that really needs to be parameterized. So if we didn't have Green's theorem, um, we'd be stuck. But we do. And the area, as I talked about in class, is this funky idea of take calculate the area un, of this region by immersing it into a fluid, which is swirling in a particular way so that the, the, the curliness, the scalar curl of that fluid is everywhere a constant, and then take the circulation of that fluid around the boundary. And that's using vector fields and Green's theorem in a totally unexpected way. So, and one of the versions of that, and it turns out the nicest way is to use um, minus yi, basically. It's the integral around the boundary of this region of minus yi, that vector field, dot dr. Now minus yi is always going left or right, because it's just got no j, but it's, it's, the amount it's going left or right depends on y. And so when um, y is positive, it's going to the left. Now when y is 0, it's nothing. That's nice. And it's going more to the left as it goes like this. And so notice, if you put a little pinwheel in here, it is plausible that it's going to it's going to rotate in a fairly systematic way. All the, whatever wherever you put the pinwheel is going to rotate uh, counterclockwise, which gives us a positive scalar curl. And so that's Green's theorem: is that this Green's theorem again says you take the scalar curl of this and integrate it over the whole region. Well, the scalar curl is exactly one. And so yeah, that's the area. So that's a, just a real re quick recap of why Green's theorem tells you that. So, this is going to be the integral. Now, it's the boundary of the region, not just the cycloid. It has to, you have to include the bottom, too. And we have to be careful to integrate uh, counterclockwise for this to work. Well, the nice thing is, this vector field is 0 along the bottom boundary, because y is 0. And so that doesn't actually contribute here. But you can really uh, get, get uh, make a big mistake if you forget that in another kind of example. So it's just the integral over the top going right to left of, well, we could use the differential form notation. It's just minus y dx. And then we've got to put everything into the parameterization. Okay. So t is going from 2 pi to 0. That's important. It's going backwards that way. And then minus y, 1 minus cos t. And then dx actually happens to be 1 minus cos t again, times dt. Because remember, the way the differential form notation works is it's very slick. You just rewrite that as dx dt times dt. Your formula gives you dx dt, and then boom, you've got the integral. I'm going to use the minus sign to flip the integral into the usual way. That is something you can do with a little bit of, of uh, trig, of like, like you know cosine squared type stuff. Part of it actually dies because it's a cosine over a full period turns out to be a very simple and pleasing answer, incredibly pleasing, 3 pi exactly.